Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome this time to a supernatural evil too monstrous to contemplate, and a spirit that hovers over all, the satyr. In the dictionary definition, a woodland deity represented as part human, part goat, noted for riotousness and lasciviousness. Not so terrifying in concept today, perhaps, but before the turn of the century, the Victorian era... Oh, I'm in my own park. It wasn't me night off. So I've got to sneak in safe and sound without the mistress knowing. <laughs> See you Thursday night. Right this rain. And keep your hands <laughs> <head. laughs> I'm still a decent girl, and that's what I'll stay till I'm married. Now, off you go. <laughs> Good night, Billy. Good night. <laughs> You'd waste <gasps> a lover's moon for convention's sake? Who's that? Can you look like... Oh, you can't be. Oh, sweet Mary, protect me. Not against me. There is no protection against me. Our mystery drama, The Death Wish, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Anne Petoniak and Court Benson. It is sponsored in part by imported Vigna Rosé wine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Another definition, just for the record. Another dictionary. Satyriasis. An abnormal sexual desire in men... But our story begins long before the terror of unbridled evil descended on the quiet, well-ordered life of the haven. The great house was built by a long-deceased ancestor in the early 18th century. And at the time all this begins has changed little in a century and a half. Until a stone cast into its quiet waters from the outside sends ripples of excitement and speculation washing over the Cutler family. Belinda, come away from the window. But, Mother, I want to see him drive up in the carriage with Father. Don't press your nose against the glass. It only means extra work for the servants. Besides, they're not due for at least 15 minutes, even if the train was on time. I don't see why we have to saddle ourselves with someone extra in the house, particularly a man. That's just sour grapes, Barbara. Belinda, come away from the window. Oh, all right. But won't you please call me Linda? You were christened Belinda. I know. Grandmother was Bella. You're Beatrice. My brother is Bruce. My sister is Barbara. And I'm Belinda. Why do we all have to be bees? Because your grandfather's name was Brian and your father's name is Blake. It's all in the family. Papa's name was only accidental. The rest was all planned. Oh, what's in a name? As I've so recently found out, I'd rather you didn't bring up that subject in front of your young sister. It was nearly 18. For heaven's sakes, Mother. It isn't as though divorce was a dirty word or something. Don't delude yourself. In our society, Linda, it's a blot. Disgraceful. Right, Mother? I prefer not to discuss so intimate a subject openly. And your sister's name is Belinda. Oh, for God's sake, the old witch isn't alive anymore. Grandma has done us all the harm she can. The hell with her. Oh, I don't like swearing either. 
and I don't like being without a man and being stuck at home again like a naughty child. I'm afraid we're all going to have to make some adjustments. God, I wish Bruce was here. I hope he knows how lucky he is to be able to get out from under the blanket and away to his internship. Mama, she doesn't mean anything. She's just so miserable. I know. I should be more forbearing. Hmm? Who is this bird who's going to help feather our cushy nest, anyway? His name is Anton Gitano. Oh, it's such a foreign and terribly romantic. Well, not really, child. As I understand it, his father was your father's Batman during the Crimea. Batman? The army's name for a valet, dear. We can't have our officers fighting wars without their boots shined. I shouldn't be so sarcastic, Barbara. If it hadn't been for Anton's father, you wouldn't be here, or your brother, or your sister. He saved Blake's life at Gallipoli, and very nearly lost his own. He is, or, or, or was, just as English as we. Gitano? Isn't that Spanish? Well, Blake told me that's a gypsy name. But of course, his family had lived here for generations. I never met him, but he had the most beautiful wife. I, I remember being quite jealous of... Excuse me, Mama, but they're here. I can hear the carriage. I can see it. It just came round by the poplar. Oh, he's the most beautiful thing you ever saw, Mama. Like a... Like a fawn. A fawn? Well... I don't mean he's half man, half, you know. He certainly is all man, I'll grant you. That aquiline face. That's what I meant. Like an ancient Roman. Or a Greek god. All right. That's quite enough nonsense from you both. Now put yourself together. And for heaven's sakes, compose yourself and greet our guests like ladies. Just be kind and gentle women. After all, the boy's father's been dead for many years now, and he has just lost his mother. How long has he expected to stay? Only till he gets settled down here and finds some employment, I hope. I really don't know. Your father was so strange about him. What do you mean, Mama? Well, it's so unlike Blake, but I really couldn't pin him down. I'm not even quite sure if he's a guest or if your father means to give him some work about the grounds or something. Beatrice? I have our guest with me. Come in, Blake, dear. We heard you drive up, and we can't wait to meet him. Hello, my dear. Barbara, Belinda. Ladies, may I present the son of the man who made you all possible in my life, Mr. Anton Gitano. I'm charmed. Uh, my wife, Beatrice. How do you do? Your servant, madam. My older daughter, Barbara. A pleasure, Miss Cutler. Mrs. Trenholm, actually. Ex since I'm no longer married. My condolences about your husband. Oh, he didn't die. I divorced him. The more fool he for deserving such a fate. And the world is a better place. Uh, yes, <clears throat> and my youngest, Belinda. Charmed. I hope I can be sure that you're still unattached and fancy-free. Uh, Belinda isn't even 18 yet. <laughs> Anyone so beautiful would have to be. Although she seems so much more mature. <laughs> You're very continental. You know just the right things to say. Do I? Then I am pleased. Because to tell you the truth, I'm shaking in my boots. You find her so formidable. Perhaps my butterflies come from being among such a bevy of delightful female companionship. Or that I feel dusty and travel-stained. Would you ladies excuse me if I change and freshen up? Of course, Anton. May I call you that? I wish you would. Very well, then, Anton. We're the ones at fault. We should have given you at least a moment to yourself before plunging you into the family circle. Blake, shall I ring for Jared, or will you see Anton to his room? Uh, Jared's seeing to the unloading of his baggage right now. I'll show him. Where have you put him? Well, I thought with Bruce away and so many trucking hands on the second floor, he'd be happier with the third floor almost to himself. The maroon and gold room? I'll be happy whatever room you put me in. Wherever it is, I'm really in imposition. Oh, we don't feel that way at all. Please. I can only hope to repay you for your welcome. I'll see you up, Anton. Uh, Beatrice, ring down and tell Giant where to send his luggage. With your permission, ladies, I shall see you at dinner... And I hope to be a bit more presentable than now. 
Yes, I'd, I'd like to have a word with you, Beatrice, as soon as I see Anton settled. Of course, dear. In the library? Yes, dear. Oh, oh, Mother, looks like you're in disfavor. Oh, did I know the young man would be as charming and educated as he turned out to be? What difference does that make? Oh, my dear innocent. Banished to the third floor, practically with the help. I'm afraid Father thinks Mother made a slight social gaffe. The help are on the fourth floor. And besides, I didn't, and I don't think it appropriate for a single young man to be roaming a floor where two young single females... Oh, really, Mother? What do you expect him to be? Peeping Tom or Ralph the Raper? Barbara, I agree with Mother. You're really terrible. He's so polite and so... so handsome. But I'll make a confession. I think Mother's instincts are right about this young man. For all his charm... I wouldn't trust him on the same corner with me, let alone around me. I never heard anything so unreasonable in all my life. I quite agree with you, Belinda. But you must remember your sister has been terribly hurt. I'm afraid for a while anything in trousers would look to her as though he had horns growing out of his head, hoofs instead of feet, and a long forked tail. Oh, thank goodness for you, Mama. You keep us all on an even keel. I don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> well, you're going to have to do without me right now, Belinda. I have to go and face your father. Well, I don't see why he couldn't have been in the room next to Bruce's. Well, there's only one bathroom on the floor, dearest. And with both the girls home, I thought there might be some embarrassment about... Oh, well, you know, they're not used to a stranger around. And they're not... Then What? Well, I, I'm not quite sure of so many things, Blake. How long will he be here? Just what his position is exactly. Well, what does that mean? Well, is he a guest? Or do you expect to employ him? Well, I, I'm dashed if I know myself, B. It's all been so sudden and unexpected. The past rearing its head up like this. Well, you do owe the boy a great deal after all. What's that? But his father did save your life, didn't he? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, at Gallipoli. Carried me out of the water after I was wounded. I'd have drowned otherwise. I'm so sorry I never met the father to thank him. I do remember his lovely gypsy wife with her great, haunting dark eyes. Was he her only child? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I suppose she, uh, they went back to Spain so shortly after that. Uh-huh. How did her husband die? Well, apparently he just disappeared. I, I haven't got all the facts. Carla, Mrs. Gitano's letter was quite brief. Uh, <clears throat> he, he seems a fine boy. Mm, and very well-mannered. It's going to be a pleasure to put him up till he decides what he wants to do with himself, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean any harm. Millie, isn't it? Yes, sir, it's the eggy, eggy, ta na, tano? It isn't difficult. Uh, Itano. It means gypsy in Spanish. Oh, I knew when I saw you. I should have let the butler bring your things up. Why? You afraid of a little fun, Millie? <laughs> Not exactly, but I have my own steady, Alfred. And I'm a decent bird. Do you know, Millie? They're the very best sort. Uh, I have... One of the men bring up the rest of your things. <laughs> A wonderful dinner, Mrs. Cutler. Thank you, Anton. Uh, I think you will understand. I'm exhausted from the journey. Would you excuse me if I just asked to go to bed? Not at all. As my mother was saying to me just before you arrived, nuestra casa es su casa. And I'm glad to be so welcome. I shall try to take advantage of it. But tonight I... You get on to bed, youngster, like the rest of us. We can all use a good night's sleep. Well, B, have you tucked in your little chicks for the night? Long ago. 
Barbara and Belinda have been asleep for well over an hour. It's almost midnight. <sighs> well, it's high time for all law-abiding people to be abed. Come on, join me before I fall asleep. I'm sorry you're tucked away already. <laughs> it's such a beautiful night. A big, round, full moon. A lover's night. I came to get a sweater. I'm going to take a little stroll in the garden. Well, I'll get up and get dressed. Oh, no, darling, you're tired. I won't be long. Just a little turn as far as the court garden. Mm. That, that's good night. Because I know you'll be asleep like the rest of the house by the time I get back. Now, Elsie, I'm still a decent girl, and that's what I'll stay till I'm married. Now, off you go. Good night, Lily. Good night. You'd waste a lover's moon just for convention's sake? Oh, no, Millie. Who's, who's that? Who, who, who's, 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 sweet Mary? Protect me. Not against me. There's no protection against me. Ah! Anton? Mrs. Cutler. What are you doing here? I was just taking a stroll before... you done? Oh, my Lord. What kind of a man are you? What indeed has Anton done? And as our story progresses, more and more, that question will be asked. What kind of man are you? Not alone by the people in our story, but by you who listen to the strange history that unfolds. I'll return shortly with Act Two. It is no moment for the squeamish, this midnight encounter in the court garden of the great manor named The Haven. The garden itself is surrounded by an eight-foot-high brick wall. The only entrance, the wrought iron gate at which Mrs. Cutler has stopped. The garden itself is evergreen, its paths moss and lichen-covered. By the light of day, it is quaint and inviting. By moonlight, it is macabre and forbidding. A fitting setting for the girl stretched limp on the ground and the figure hunched over it. Anton, is this you? Unmasked, Mrs. Cutler. I'm afraid so. And... And Millie? She's dead. Dead? How? I suggest we go somewhere to talk in private. But Millie, I, I must see to her. She may not be... You may take my word for it that she is dead. It was an accident because she wasn't intelligent enough to listen to me. But you are going to be, aren't you? I, I don't know what you mean, Anton. Or, or whoever you are. I'm afraid you do, Mrs. Cutler. I mean, when the police come tomorrow, you're going to forget everything you saw, or thought you saw. After we have our little talk, that is. Otherwise, someone else, much nearer and dearer to you than Millie, will suddenly and unaccountably be just as dead as Millie. Who? What are you? My mother's son. She was the gypsy. But your father... What father? I never had a father. Just my mother and me. Well, then how did Blake... I mean, why did he take you in? My mother left me a rather special gift. Shall I show it to you? Oh, I, I, I don't want to see. I don't want to know anymore. I just want to go... You back. must. Oh, you're hurting me. You'll forget physical pain in a moment. Wait. Ah, there. The moon is out again. Let's see. Yes. He'll do. You see the owl sitting there in the tree? No, no, there. Straight ahead of you. Yes, I see him. Then watch. Owl perched high above my head. Hear you this. I wish you dead. Lord. Any living creature, any time I wish. Your husband, your son, your daughters... If you cross me, I wish them the same. That's why you will remain quiet about anything and everything you have seen in this garden. A 
It's Blake there. Come in. Uh, what time is it? Well, it's nearly ten o'clock, B. Oh, good heavens. Now, how could you let me sleep so late? You seemed absolutely exhausted this morning. I, I couldn't manage to wake you. I know. I had a terrible dream. It must have been a dream. It kept me awake till dawn. What kind of a dream? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't want to talk about it. Ten o'clock? What are you doing home from business? Well, there's been a... A terrible accident. A what? I'm afraid the police are here, and they wanted to ask you a question or two. Me? Why, why me? What, what sort of accident? Uh, one of the upstairs maids was found by the gardener in the court garden this morning. What do you mean, found? Dead? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, the cheeky, lively little one, uh, Millie, I think her name is. What a dream. What did you say, B? I, I said, this is just like a bad dream. Poor little Millie. But why on earth would the police want to see me? Well, darling, I, I happen to mention that you took a stroll outside last night about midnight and that you mentioned you were going as far as the court garden. Oh, uh, but, but I, I didn't. It was chillier than I thought, so I came back. What happened? Well, it's all so strange. Apparently, Millie nipped out of the house last night to, uh, well, to meet a boy she knew. Alfred Pinster. He's a local groom at the public stables. And they think he did it. Oh, no, no. He's in the clear. Fortunately for him, the ground in the court garden was damp. There wasn't a trace of his footsteps in there. Only the girls and... Uh, and what else? Well, what killed the poor child... That vicious billy goat of Tam Pierce's apparently had got loose last night and chased Millie into the court garden. I suppose she thought she could close the gates and keep him out, but he got in after her and... And what? Well, uh, his hoof marks were all over the place. Oh. Even on... Well, he must literally have trampled it. Oh, how terrible. Yeah, that was a lucky thing for young Alfie, though. Otherwise, it would have looked like a plain case of... Uh, well, to be polite, assault. That, too. Oh, let me get dressed. I really should talk to the police myself. Well, good morning, Mr. Gypsy. And to you, Mrs. Tennell. A victory for accuracy. We both have each other's names correct. You speak Spanish? Not much. But I looked up Gitano. It rang a chord. A pleasant one, I hope. Nothing pleasant about this morning after what happened to poor Millie. I, I've got to get some fresh air. I'm going for a ride. Excuse me. Would you allow me to join you? Suit yourself. But I warn you, in my present mood, I'm somewhat restless. I accept the challenge. Challenge? It was more of that than an invitation, wasn't it? I'll leave you to make up your own mind about that. Come on, if you're going. I love the view from here. There's the haven away down there to the left. It's a very large estate. And so near town. The priceless property. I think so, too. But not in terms of money, which is obviously what you meant. Why don't you like me? I never said I didn't. You didn't have to. I can sense it. Maybe it's because I've been through a bad experience with Trevor. Maybe it's because you're just too charming and too beautiful a man to be quite true. And maybe it's because you're much too young. Too young for what? For me. If that's all that's worrying you... Oh, for heaven's sake, don't take me literally. I only... Mm. Oh! Let me go, please, Anton. Not till I prove to you that I am not a boy. Very well. You are a man. A big, strong man. Not quite yet. Damn it, if you won't let me... <clears throat> you must be crazy. For you, yes. But a better word is hungry. Just as you are. Now, really, that's enough. Don't be silly. We both know it's only the beginning. Are you conceited enough to think that Oh, I... yes, I am. You see that blueberry bush over there? Yes. Watch it. 
I wish you dead. My God. You're very fond of your mayor, aren't you? Shall I wish her the same? No. Or your father. I can do it, you know. Who? Who are you? For the moment, Barbara. Your lover. You might as well have wished me dead. I doubt it. You'll get used to me as a surrogate husband. I'll kill myself if you ever touch me again. You do, and I promise your father will die as I killed that bush. Why us? Your power must be the same anywhere else in the world. Why do you come back to haunt us? Because my mother ordered me to, and she... Why do you stop? You mean when she died? If you want to call it that. I mean, when her time had come. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. I still ask you, why us? We do not question the orders of our superiors. Come, let's get back to lunch. I'm ravenous. But you ride with him almost every day, Barbara. Why can't I go with you sometimes? Gosh, Linda. Stay away from us. But it isn't fair. You're too old for him anyway. And you're too young for him. You stay away from him. You hear? Are you? You're jealous, Barbara. Never mind what I am. Just stay away from him. I understand, Mrs. Cutler. You've been suggesting to your daughter, Barbara, that she's seeing too much of me. Can you blame me? I also understand that you have even gone so far as to try to persuade Mr. Cutler to send her away. I... Please, Anton, please. Barbara's heart was broken by her divorce. The girl has enough agony to cope with. Don't hurt her anymore. I have no intention to. In fact, my intentions are quite otherwise. But if you want to protect her, remember the power I have and leave us alone. Please, Papa, I'm begging you. Papa, you haven't called me that, Barbara, since you were a little girl. Well, I'm not that anymore. Can't you? Won't you please send him away? I can't. I I can't do that. And you know, too. He's like a cancer. Spreading and spreading till he infects and destroys us all. And how can we stop it? We're like puppets. All he has to do is pull the strings, and we have to dance to his command. We've got to stop him somehow, or we'll all be as good as dead. Stunned and shocked, Blake Carter stares at a beloved daughter who is emotionally coming to pieces before his very eyes. And yet, in those eyes, can we detect a puzzlement, a bewilderment that suggests he doesn't fully comprehend exactly what she's talking about? We'll find that out when I return shortly with Act Three. It's a lovely English September afternoon. The sun, streaming down from a cloudless sky, throws a dappling of lacy shadows on the bright green lawns as it streams through the trees. From the outside, the great manor seems well-named, the Haven. But inside, something dark and insidious is growing, like a black, invisible mushroom, poisoning the atmosphere the cutlers breathe, threatening their very lives, one by one. In the library, Barbara and her father remain as we left them, facing each other, gripped by emotions not yet fully explained. What do you mean, as good as dead? Let's not fence with each other, Papa. Obviously, you know his power and are as helpless as we are. Power? I don't understand you. To kill anything he wants, just by wishing it. Barbara, I really don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean his power to kill anything he wants to. Didn't he show you? Did you just take him at his word? Barbara, come, sit sit down for a minute. You're shaking all over. What is it, child? It's it's just remembering those first terrible, awful moments. Oh, Papa, he scared me. He really scared me almost to death. 
All right, darling, darling. I, I won't let any... Well, anything else hurt you if I possibly can. I couldn't help with Trevor. But I can with Anton, whatever it is. Tell me about it. And because of some trick with a bush, he forced you to... It wasn't any trick. I saw it die with my own eyes. Didn't he give you an example? Of what? Of how all he has to do is wish something dead. And it is. Oh, you're seeing things, dear. Imagining. You've always had too much of it. This wasn't imagination. It's cold, stark, brutal reality. But you didn't believe it when he showed you. You thought it was just some kind of trick. Showed me what, dear? He hasn't showed me anything like that. Then why did you say you... You can't send him away? <sighs> Darling, don't press it. it. It's because I have an old debt to repay. Let's leave it at that. But I certainly intend to have a talk with Anton. After what you've told me, I'm damned if I'll sit still for what's happened. I'll just take my chances unless he agrees to marry you. Marry me? Well, isn't that what you want? I wouldn't marry him if... Oh, Lord. I don't know what to do. Just leave it alone, Papa. Will you please? Let me try to work it out. But Barbara... Yes, come in. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Am I interrupting anything? No, not a thing. Come in. If I'm breaking into family business or something... I was just leaving. I'll leave you two together. Papa? Yes? Leave it to me. There's nothing for you to worry about, Barbara. I know how to handle myself now. But I... Leave it to me, please, and close the door. I have a feeling I did interrupt something. I'm sorry if I came at a bad time. You didn't. I want to talk to you. And then I feel better. I wanted to have a talk with you, sir. Well, I should think it's about time. So Barbara has been telling tales out of school. Quite naturally. I wonder just how much she has revealed and what she expected to gain by it. Isn't that what you wanted to talk to me about? Not exactly, sir. The subject I wanted to discuss was money. I can't imagine why you insisted on dragging me all the way down to the court garden, Barbara. It's never been your favorite spot. I hate it more than ever now, Mama. Mama... You haven't called me that since you were... I need reassurance. I need help. I'm scared to death. I'm clutching at straws, and that's what Father said when I went back to calling him Papa. But if ever we need to stick together as a family, it's now. Barbara, what is it? It has to be all or nothing now. Mama, wasn't it right here they found Millie dead? Yes, and... Wasn't it Anton who killed her? What do you mean? You can't deceive me. What did he do? Just point his finger at Millie and say, I wish you dead. And weren't you out here that night walking in the gardens as you often do? And didn't you see it? And didn't he threaten you to keep you quiet? Or one or other of us would be as dead as Millie was. <laughs> barking up the wrong tree, Anton. I haven't any money. Let's not be foolish, sir. I've looked down on the estate from Cheltenham Ridge, and I can see that it's worth a fortune. Well, that's true enough. But how far do you think you can stretch the repayment of an old debt? Your father saved my life. That's a lie. I had no father. I put it as you like. I was willing to open my home to you to try to find you a well-paying job. I don't want a job. I want the haven and all the land that goes with it. Impossible. What you already have is my daughter, and I will endow her with what dowry I can. I don't think you understand, Mr. Blake. I don't want your daughter. Barbara was just an extra bonus, a temporary necessity. What I want is the estate in toto. Well, then you are due to be disappointed. It isn't mine to give, even if I were so inclined. Then how can you live here? Because I did exactly what you want to do. Oh, perhaps not for the same selfish reasons. I married into money. The estate came from my wife's family. And then I'm wasting my time with you. I'll get it from her. You're an amazing young man. 
I can't quite credit you. You seem to be as hard and unprincipled and unyielding as Bertie herself. Bertie? A uh, nickname. And I assure you, not a fond one for Bella Chelton, my wife's mother, who will this estate. Not to your wife? No, not to my wife. For reasons you perhaps know, she disapproved of our marriage. Nor to my son, Bruce. Barbara. Bertie didn't believe in divorce. Ah, then to Linda. To Belinda, a minor, in trust for three more years. So you see, your demands are impossible as well as unreasonable. But that isn't the point. Of course it is. She's an engaging and nubile youngster, and I know how she feels about me. We can get married right away. You'd need my consent, and the only way you'd get it is over my dead body. I'm past recognizing the cost of your threat to me and mine, and I... Hold up, old man. Whatever Barbara has told you, perhaps you don't recognize or refuse to accept the real cost. Very well. This is the moment of truth. Let's see. What's that? Uh, that scout. My retriever. It isn't important now. Oh, you'd be surprised how important. Down, boy, down. Sit. Now, where did you let Scout in? To wake you up to what you face. What are you after? Your promise that your rich little daughter shall be mine, body and <laughs> estate. Or you start to lose everything you love most. Starting with, what was that asinine name of, oh yes, Scout. You must be mad. If you don't accept my proposition, so must you be. Now look here. Certainly I knuckled under to you and your mother to save my happiness. But there is an end to compromise. To hell with your cheap threats. I've had enough of you. I'm ready to make my own confession. To prove my mastery over your master. Scout. I wish you dead. What have you done? What I can do to you or yours. Animal, vegetable, human, whatever I decide. Think it over, old man. I'll give you a reasonable time to make up your mind. Let's say, till tomorrow night. You do understand, Papa, now. You do believe. Yes. But what can we do? Mother's involved, too. You know that. She is? He killed Millie. Mother stumbled on it that night. She went out for a walk. He's got us all involved, except Linda. <sighs> Your little sister is no longer immune. He knows the money goes to her. He wants to marry her. You can stop that. The one thing I can do. But it's only temporary. It isn't the only thing we can do. What else? Anton enjoys killing things. Whatever or whoever they may be. I've already promised to take him grouse hunting tomorrow. Why don't you join us? Oh, Barbara, I'm in no mood for sporting. There won't be any sport connected with this. While I keep his attention away from you, shoot him in the back. A hunting accident? Why not? Well, we'd never get away with it. Of course we can. He's nobody here, and everyone knows who we are, our family. Papa, it's the only way. You... You're more of a man than I am, Barbara. All right, we'll do it. Tomorrow morning is the execution. And nobody ever deserved it more. I've been looking forward to this. I'm very glad you made up your mind about Linda and me, sir. She's happy, too. Yes, the only thing to do. I haven't said anything to either of the girls, huh? No, better not. Might be a little difficult. When do we flush some birds? I miss old Scout. I am sorry about that, but I have to prove a point. I think we have some game. Where? Just this way, towards me. Coming. Okay, Dad. Shoot. Shoot. But there are no birds. Oh. I can't. No matter what man is, I, I can't kill him in cold blood. Not this man. So, it is all in the open. Then I will. Without compunction, in the back, where he deserves. Hold it. Don't turn. I'll even drop my gun. Fire if you want, Barbara. But I can wish faster than the shot can travel. Or you, Mr. Cutler. I can wish you all dead. But I'm sure one is enough. The innocent one. The one far away. Your son. Your firstborn. 
Now I offer you the challenge. Fire if you want. But if any of you wish to stay alive, let me prove my power now and forever. Wherever he is, your son, your firstborn, I wish him dead. Oh, <laughs> He's... He's dead. But we didn't. We didn't have to. He killed himself. How? But there never was a father that saved me at Gallipoli. Only an excuse to try to explain the black-eyed gypsy called Carla, who caught me in her spell and to whom I lost my head. My heart and my honor. I should say your mother's honor. I've carried the shame of it all these years. Till he turned up with that letter from her. Apparently she never told Anton the truth. But he was my firstborn. I didn't want your mother to know. There are a lot of things about all of us we don't want anyone to know, Papa. And when you said she cast a spell, perhaps you were right. He said himself she was a witch. And look, now, where he's lying. What do you mean? I've felt it. Heaven help me. But maybe that's only in my mind. Still, I see him from the waist down, all hair and two cloven hooves. It was poor, innocent Linda who first called him a fawn. He was far more evil than that. Thank God he is without life. Because what I see lying there is a satyr. <laughs> belief. Belief is illusion. When the authorities picked up the body from the heath, there was nothing unusual about it. A hunting accident most regrettable. But luckily there were none to mourn save the cutlers. We've told you a gothic tale of ghoulery, which for once ended not in despair, nor perhaps in happiness, but at least in relief and freedom. I'll be back shortly. Mrs. Cutler never learned of her husband's ancient transgression. Barbara married soon after and was a woman who had learned how to make marriage work and thrive. And Belinda finally got her family to call her just simply Linda, which was enough for the moment. She spent a few tears over Anton, who might have been, but being her age was soon adjusted to whatever was to be. A state as long as it is expectant and hopeful, which is the best any of us at any age can ask for. Our cast included Anne Petoniak, Roberta Maxwell, Jada Rowland, Court Benson, and Michael Zaslow. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What's wrong? Emily, what is it? Oh, Steve. Look out the window. At what? There, near the swimming pool. All right, I'm looking. There. There's a man. Where? There, that man standing there. Darling, there isn't anyone standing. He's looking up this way. I don't see it. He's looking up at our window. Oh, it has to be your imagination. No, 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 Steve. There's a man. No, darling, it's just a shadow cast by the edge. What? See? He's moving his hand. I tell you, there's no he's, one there. He's beckoning for me, for me to come. Darling, 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 it's only your imagination. Now, come out in the window. Uh, I can't move. Emily, there's no one out there. There's no one at all. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time...
pleasant dreams.